Hello and welcome to Murray County Now. Murray County's premier news show covering the events, ideas, groups, and happenings in and around Murray County. A movement is underway to change the former Columbia Dam project into a major recreational area and park. Murray County Now recently spoke to Larry Brewer and Leslie Colley about the land now called Yanelli and the efforts being made to turn it into a local attraction. I'm Larry Brewer. I'm here to talk about Yanelli. And the Yanelli land is land that was bought by the federal government to build the Columbia Dam. The state received this land in 2001. So a group of us got interested in how this can benefit Murray County. Decisions then were made that this area that we're standing on would be used as a multi-purpose recreational area and a wildlife management area. What happened during the last four or five years is we would meet with equestrian people and they would say, yeah, we want to do that. We would meet with mountain bikers. We'd meet with different people and they wanted to do it. When we went and talked with Murray County Parks, we met with them and they thought it was a great idea. So that kind of, that gives us a county group that is interested in all developments. That's when we started picking up steam as to how it could happen. An online survey was done by the Murray County Parks. The number one activity desired was a dog park where you could come and sit and enjoy the beautiful day like we have today and let your dogs play with other dogs. Uh, some of the uses that the Park Service has decided would be beneficial for the community is for there to be a museum or nature center developed for where there could be some community gardens, as I said, the dog park, some hiking trails, some bike trails, equestrian, for there to be a, a permanent site to host the Columbia Mule Day wagon train would be available on this 477 acres. The time frame would be depending on grants, how much the community got involved, and if the people, the good thing that I like about what's happening is that if any group of people wants to use this land as recreation, they go before the Parks Board, explain their program to the Parks Board, let the Parks Board decide whether they can or can't. So it, it's, it's a win-win situation for everyone. If any group wants me to talk to them or wants to call and ask questions, I'll be glad to answer and be available for, the, for, the, for you at any time. My name is Leslie Colley. I work for the Nature Conservancy, taking care of the Upper Duck River watershed, among other things across the state. And I'm a native of Murray County, and I'm happy to talk to you today. Well, I think it is going to uh, open up a really nice area to the citizens of this community and, and surrounding counties. It's very pretty and sort of wild out there. Uh, I flushed a covey of quail uh, out there the other day and saw a lot of birds and signs of turkey and um, it's just, it's a great spot with a lot of river access. I think open space and green space is really critical to our well-being and mental health and just being able to sort of check out and go to some beautiful, quiet, green place and wander around aimlessly is pretty good for us humans. Uh, I think that it is going to be an economic driver potentially for our community. And I think just getting outside and walking and getting some exercise and having some more options for physical activity in our community is, is a plus as well. Every town is famous for something and no one can put the can in cantaloupe like Kolioka. Adam Southern brings us a sweet story that could grow on you in this next segment of Historic Murray County. Hello, I'm Adam Southern, and this is another edition of Historic Murray County. We recently relit our historic neon sign at the library, taking one off of our list of projects. And the next on that list is to hopefully one day soon get a state historical marker in Cullioca, Tennessee. Now you might be asking, what is Kalioka famous for? What did Kalioka ever do? It's just a wide spot in the road. Well, back in the early 1900s, Kalioka was famous for cantaloupes. Their cantaloupes were better than all the rest grown in the United States. 
and it was because of its unique color and its unique taste. It was salmon colored and supposedly had one of the sweetest tastes ever. And they called it the Kalioka Queen Cantaloupe. And to set it apart from all the rest, the Park Brothers, Erastus and Hardy, they started putting stickers like this on their cantaloupes. And they were the first to ever do that. And now you see every produce do that. Uh, Chiquita Bananas always have that sticker. Well, Kalioka Cantaloupe Company was the first to ever put a sticker on their product. And uh, the Kalioka soldiers who went off and fought in World War I, when they came back from war into New York City, they saw on the menus Kalioka Cantaloupe listed. So it was being served in New York City. And it became so well known that other towns tried to copycat them. And you see places in California trying to grow Kalioka can cantaloupes, but they couldn't spell Kalioka right. And uh, there were different variations of the Kalioka cantaloupe after that because of all the plagiarism going on in the cantaloupe market. Uh, we also see that in the 1920s, things are starting to come to a close. Uh, the, depression, the depression is hitting, so Kalioka cantaloupe farmers are kind of losing their land a little bit. And also, a tornado comes through in Kalioka, wipes out the depot and the produce company. And that really puts an end to the Kalioka cantaloupe as we knew it. Some people say they still have seeds from this original strand. I have some in my possession. I grow them every year. Whether it's true or not, I like to say I'm growing Kalioka cantaloupe. But uh, the truth of the matter is, what we need is concrete evidence that Kalioka cantaloupes were sold outside of Murray County, and it would help that if we had something that showed Kalioka cantaloupe was sold and consumed outside of Tennessee. People tell me that they have menus that show Kalioka cantaloupe on them from New York City. Well, if you have one of those, please bring them to me. All we need is something with Kalioka cantaloupe from outside of Tennessee written on it, and we can get that state historical marker. So please bring that to me at the Murray County Library if you have it. And while you're here, come check out our neon sign. Be glad to show it to you. And uh, just come to the library. Adam Southern, thank you. Arts in Action has paired up with Pet Pals of Murray County to bring the First Farmers and Merchants Bank Chalk Art Festival Unplugged to downtown Columbia. We spoke with Marion Haynes to chalk out what it's all about. Hi, I'm Marion, President-Elect of Arts in Action. Arts in Action and Pet Pals of Murray County have partnered together to bring you First Farmers and Merchants Chalk Art and Music Festival Unplugged. This event takes place on Saturday, June 15th from 9 to 6 on the downtown square rain or shine on Father's Day weekend. This is a family-friendly, hands-on event transforming the square into a bright and colorful temporary art street museum. Musicians will fill the square with sounds of bluegrass, newgrass, and Americana music. For this event, we have brought families, pets, arts, and music together. Kids can chalk out a square for their dad on Father's Day weekend. There will be canine and service and rescue demonstrations as well as the best dressed pet contests. For more information, please visit our website at artsinactiontn.com. Click on First Farmers and Merchants Chalk Art and Music Festival. Download the registration forms. The deadline is May 31st. Sponsors for this event are Caledonian Financial, Murray County Convention and Visitors Bureau, United Waste Haulers, CPWS, Hardin Parks, Kelly Carter and Bryant Law Firm, Morgan Stanley, Spox and Company, WKOM, Daily Herald, and Friends of Murray County Park. Come chalk with us, listen to the music, and bring your favorite four-legged friend. For more information, visit artsinactiontn.com. Springtime in Tennessee means severe weather for Columbia and Murray County. Code Red is an emergency notification system that will send you a phone call in the event of severe weather. Here's Pat Woodmancy with the Office of Emergency Management to talk more about Code Red and how you can sign up for this free service. Good afternoon, my name is Pat Woodmancy. I'm with Murray County Office of Emergency Management. I'm the Assistant Director 
and I'm here to talk to you today about the code red weather warning that the Murray County has now in place for all residents and businesses of Murray County. Code red weather warning is the notification system that we have for residents to be able to receive calls via your landlines, your cell phones, or the TTDY phones. It will be warnings for tornado, severe thunderstorms, and flash flooding. If you don't wish to have all of those, you can, there's check boxes you can take off the ones that you don't wish to receive. You need to go to Murray County's website and it's on the front, it's under the in spotlight and it says code red, sign up here and it'll take you to the link to sign up at. The weather warnings are put out by the National Weather Service. You can choose which ones because it will go out. Now those are automatically dispersed by the National Weather Service. With this system as well, besides just for the code red, there is another portion of this notification system in which the Murray County Emergency Management and officials can put out specific warnings. Let's say there's a boil water notice that has to go out. That one we can automatically send out to certain residents in those areas that that will be affected with. So we have another notification system for those type of incidents as well. From the producer Murray County Now and CPWS PowerNet 13 comes a brand new show, Puckett's Columbia Showcase. Puckett's Columbia Showcase will feature artists and acts performing at Puckett's in downtown Columbia. Here's a clip of Puckett's Columbia Showcase featuring two steel girls. We have some Cash fans in here. Woo, we love John and Cash. <laughs> When I was just a baby, my mama told me, son, always be a good boy, don't you ever, ever play, play with, with guns. guns. And I shot a man in Reno, just so often that I hang my head and cry.
tired.